flexibility in our home, work, personal and study lives can be really important to help us look after our mental well-being. Hey folks, it's Finn. Welcome back folks, lovely to see you. Today's video is a mental health topic and today's video I want to talk about the power of flexibility in looking after our mental well-being. Now our mental health is as important as our physical health and in today's video I want to share a flexibility tool that I created that can help us to use our time in ways that supports good mental well-being. But before we get stuck in, for anyone who is new, a very, very big welcome. My name is Finn and I share my life in recovery as a transgender gay man. So here on this channel, you will find loads of really honest, first-hand accounts and practical advice on gender transition, mental health and personal development. So if you've been watching for a while and you haven't yet, please do subscribe because it really helps my channel. And if you tick the notification bell, you'll also be notified whenever I upload anything new. So flexibility is something that I am really, really passionate about because I only really recently discovered the power of flexibility in my own life. And I discovered it purely by accident. Now, I have had poor mental health for a number of years. I have fluctuating mental health. I have high anxiety periods and low mood periods. And historically, that's always got in the way of all of my successes in life. It got in the way in school, it got in the way in college, it got in the way in university, and it's got in the way in all of my jobs. Because my mental health wouldn't allow me to stick to a nine to five routine in work or in study. And for a number of years, I thought that I was just doomed to fail because of my inability to fit to a nine to five. But all that changed in 2010 when I enrolled with the Open University and began an Open University degree. And for the first time in my life, I was succeeding. I was completing my modules and doing really well. And the reason for that was because of the flexibility, because I could work from home, because I could choose where I worked, because I could choose my hours. And in that moment, I became aware of how powerful flexibility could be to make me completely change my life, my career, the way I work, the way I study, everything. And in the years since then, I've been refining the flexibility method I use that I'm going to share with you today. Now, I spoke in length about this flexibility tool when I did my TED talk last year, and I shall put a link up here so you can watch that full talk. Now, I did pitch this idea for people like me who have fluctuating mental health conditions, but actually this method works with any fluctuating condition, with any condition you have, whether that's a mental health condition or a physical health condition. If you have a condition that means that the normal nine to five routine doesn't work for you, then this flexibility tool can be really helpful for you to find ways to manage your condition around work. But actually, since doing my talk and chatting with other people, I've had so much positive feedback that actually this method that I'm about to share with you can be used by anyone for any reason, work life, home life, personal life, study life, and it's really flexible for you to use in all sorts of ways. Because if you're gonna have a flexibility tool, it's gonna have to be flexible. Now, when we think about flexibility, people tend to think about flexi time. So people think about coming into work late, working different days, but actually, flexibility is a lot more diverse than that. So with my flexibility method, I've developed the TIME acronym. And this TIME acronym looks at four key areas of flexibility that we can use to manage our mental well-being around our work and study. These four areas are the time frame, so that's choosing the hours we work, the intensity, so choosing the tasks we're doing, the difficulty level of those tasks, method in choosing how we work with others and environment choosing where we work. So to give you an example of how that works in practice, if for example I've woken up and my mental health is not great at all, I can stop for a minute, look at these four key areas in my life, time, intensity, method and environment 
and look if any of those can be brought into my day to give me some flexibility around how I'm feeling. For example, when it comes to time frame, I might think, you know what, I was gonna work nine till five today, but actually I'm not feeling great. I'm gonna take a couple of hours off and work till a little bit later in the evening, swapping things round a bit so I can take some time now for some self-care and then work later on. Or looking at the intensity of tasks, I might think, I'm not in a great space today to write a blog or make a video. So instead what I'm gonna do is some of the lighter tasks. I might do a bit of admin, a bit of file sorting, tasks that I find easier or I enjoy just to take that pressure off myself there. I can also look at the method. Perhaps I need to contact people today and the method would normally be that I give them a phone call. Perhaps my mental health is meaning that I'm just not up for talking on the phone. So perhaps I can choose a different method I can choose to email somebody instead. And I can look at my environment. Often if I'm not feeling great, a simple act such as taking my laptop to the lounge, putting my feet up and having my laptop on my lap and working like that can make me feel better. Or sometimes I can get halfway through a day and I'm really struggling. So I just change my environment. I might go and work in the garden. I might go and work in a cafe. And this then helps me to just change how I'm feeling by changing the environment. So it's possible to see how flexibility is a large variety of things. Flexibility is about what we're doing, who we're doing it with, where we're doing it, the intensity of where we're doing it, and any of these can be changed. And in most situations they can be changed. Now I know I work from home and I've engineered that on purpose because for me that is the only way to ensure full flexibility for my fluctuating mental health. But these can be put into place in most jobs now. And I think having gone through this COVID pandemic and seeing that businesses actually can implement a lot more flexibility, I would argue that if you're not feeling great, you push this with your employer and you talk to them. Because at the end of the day, flexibility is accessibility in the same way that a ramp is for a wheelchair user. So asking your employer, perhaps you can just work from home, you can have more flexible hours, you can come in a bit later or go home a bit earlier and make your hours up. Perhaps you can have more options around choosing your tasks. Perhaps you can choose different environments at work, taking your work to a quieter area, if possible. Did that make sense? One of the common questions I get when I tell people about the flexibility method I use, this is how I run my life. This, without this method, I wouldn't be where I am now. I use these four things every single day, depending on how my mental health is every single day. But people saying to me, well, what about deadlines, Finn? You can't just, if you've got a talk, for example, I couldn't just say, actually, can I do the talk from home? But actually, that is possible from home, thanks to Zoom. But you'd be right, there are situations where an appointment is in place that I can't change. But that's the beauty of this flexibility method because ordinarily, if I was having a very poor mental health day, if my mood was very low or my anxiety was high, if I push through that anxiety, if I push through that low mood and force myself to do something, I can end up being very poorly. I can end up relapsing in all sorts of areas. However, if I know that I can push through that high anxiety event and then I can put flexibility in the days following, it's then safer to push through, if that makes sense. So I might go to an appointment that's hugely anxiety provoking, knowing that the day leading up to that appointment, I can put flexibility in place to be a bit more gentle on myself before the event, and I can put flexibility in place after the event. So it still allows us, when we use the flexibility method, to stick to set routines when we need to. But what it does is around these strict routines, gives us some breathing space before and afterwards where we can implement flexibility to keep our mental health safe. This is something that I've been doing over the last few years as I've become working from home. And it's something that once I did the TED talk and I actually created the TIME acronym that I'm really thinking consciously about every single day now. And I've actually added another letter in it, so I've made it times, and the S stands for self-care, because that should be part of our everyday life regardless. And for me, working from home, 
through the COVID pandemic with my partner shielding at home, there was lots of times where I've been very aware that my usual method of self-care wasn't available. So I added the S to remind myself that as well as looking at my time frame, my intensity, my method and my environment, I also needed to look at what self-care I was putting in every single day. Even if it's a brief five minutes on the sofa with a couple of paragraphs of a book and a cup of tea. Some method of self-care helps then to manage our mental health and manage the rest of our day. I really hope that this is helpful, not just for people with mental health or physical health that fluctuates, but for everyone to think differently about how we work, the little things we might be able to change in our work environments to help give us some breathing space and look after our mental health, to use in our home life, around tasks we need to do at home and around our study life because we all need to look after our mental health. It's a vital part, especially right now with what's going on. So if you do manage to implement this in your life, I would love to hear. So please do leave me a message in the section below and leave me any comments or questions there as well. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to see more of my videos about mental health, I shall link you to a playlist here. Take care of yourselves. See you next week.